It's January the 12th, it's on Wednesday. We have four places to choose from to go next. Um, we've been to Le Canard Joyeux to ask about uh, the fox. What was his name again? Kind of forgot. Um, the Spaniard. So we actually have three choices to choose from. This is Les Halles Palais du Louvre Bibliothèque Caché. Um, let's go to the scene of the murder first. And that's in the Louvre. Falcon and Sparison make their way to the Place du Carousel, the courtyard just north of the Louvre's Grande Galerie. That's the Arc de Triomphe over there, right? I swear it's smaller than how I remember it. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, you doofus. The big Arc de Triomphe is up the road. What? No way. Why are there two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. Cocorico comes to play. It's a cock. Well, 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 I never expected to see you here, JJ. That arrogant voice. Sigh. Good day, Severin. Let's be civil, JJ. Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Fine, fine. Severin, this is Parasan, my assistant. Sparison, this is Severin Cocorico, the most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh, are you two old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ, I think arch rival implies some sort of competition. As I recall, we've met in court on five occasions, and on five occasions did you get humiliated terribly. I'm amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Actually, Severin, business has never been better. I'll have you know that I'm currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. The Prince of Spain, Juan Querido? Well, well, this is quite an amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. Correct, I am the prosecutor for the very same case. It's a pity that the Spanish Prince will indubitably... I don't know that word. Hang? But I suppose uh, that is what he gets for hiring a bird brain to represent him. Don't call me bird brain, you're the only bird brain here, Severin. Tsk. One always speaks badly when one has nothing to say. Voltaire. He quotes someone. Famous French. Whatever. Uh, oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown. Quick, Falcon, make a witty retort. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, do we have to choose? We do. I'm rubber and you're glue. I don't agree with what you say. A witty saying proves nothing. That's a lame answer. Let's go with this one. I don't know where he's going with that, but... Yeah, well, I'm rubber and you're glue. What bounces off you? Wait. Oh, dear. Tsk, you're the same bumbling fool that you've always been, Falcon. But enough talk, if your monsieur would excuse me, I have a case to prepare for. JJ, Sparrison, I'll see you two in court. Ugh, I can't stand that guy. He did seem like a bit of a cockerel. But is it true what he said, you know, that he trounced you in court five times? Can't deny it, Severin's reputation as a ruthlessly thorough pre prosecutor. Mountains of evidence, surprise witnesses. It's no wonder he always manages to one-up me. But this time will be different, right? I hope so. I know so, for you, see... I stole this annotated map of the Louvre out of Cocorico's pocket when he was busy rattling off Voltaire quotes. Spare son, that's... 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 Pretty impressive. Actually, I swear you were standing three meters away the whole time. <laughs> I was about to say. You tall birds are so busy with your heads in the clouds that you don't ever notice the small folk running around your feet. Pinching Cocorico's pocket was like taking candy from a very tall baby. Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Louvre area. Everything from Tuileries, Tuileries to the Rue de Louvre. Most convenient. Route du Roi. What does that mean? The arrows... 
the Seine, the Fleuve. Here's the palace, here's the garden, Jardin des Tuileries. Is that in my evidence? No, those are my uh, connections. That's the one who got killed, Major Howell. This is the dude we just met, a successful and pompous public prosecutor. Seems to have a love of philosophy and a hobby of humiliating Falcon. Ooh, there are even more people here. There's Fontaine. That's the guy we met at the um, the bar. A hunting beagle. He seems like a bit of a gun nerd. The other dude, a parrot with a big mouth, a big hat, and a big attitude. And those two, two tavern dwellers who seem to enjoy nothing more than drinking, playing cards, and bickering over nothing. I guess we still miss someone. In this case, we're about to meet some new people, I think. Anyway, we're currently standing here in the Place du Cour Carousel. And those pendant arrows seems to show the route taken by the king's entourage. Which means that the king first went to... Uh, there. <laughs> here, through the Salle du Tibre. And then here, into the Grande Galerie, where the murder occurred. Didn't Prince Juan say that he spent the morning in the Tuileries Gardens? That's right. So that means Prince Juan approached the louver from the west side, somewhere over here. Sounds like we have a lot of places to visit. Where should we go first? Ah. We can choose. Um... Well, uh, I guess we go from here to the left. So that means oh, we're over here right now, right? Place du Carousel. Are we all done here? Oh, that's where we meant the uh, the cock. Um, yep. I. What if we choose not yet, though? Not just yet. Pass me that map. Okay, it's the same, I think. Uh, let's go to Salle du Tibre. So this is the Salle du Tibre. If I understand Cocorico's nose correctly, this is the room the king and his entourage stopped in before heading to the Grande Galerie. This room doesn't seem to be very popular. I don't see anybody around to interrogate. Interview. Right. Interview. Well, since it's quiet, maybe we should take the opportunity to do a little snooping. What would be the point? Surely all the interesting evidence would be in the Grande Galerie, where the murder took place. Think about it, Falcon. The police would have already gone over the Grande Galerie with a fine-toothed comb. But I bet that numbskull Inspector Volerti didn't even think to check this room for clues. There might be a murder weapon just under our beaks. Your logic seems a little questionable, but it couldn't hurt to have a look, I suppose. Alright. The examination mode begins again. There's this vase. A shiny copper urn. I guess it was used for carrying water or for cremated remains. Probably not both at the same time. It smells good. Don't sniff the exhibit, Sparison. No, really, this urn smells amazing. It's almost chocolatey. Chocolatey? You poor thing. You're hallucinating from hunger. Would you like to stop by a bakery on our way back to the office? Don't patronize me, Falcon. My nose never lies. I'm telling you, there's something in here. I can feel it. Now you're touching the exhibit. That's definitely a no-no. See? Look what I found in the urn. Put that down, Sparrowson. It's someone old rubbish. No, look. It's a chocolate wrapper. Judging by the smell, the chocolate was bitter and dark. 70, perhaps 80% cocoa. Belgian in origin. The level of wrapper crumpling and the firmness of the chocolate residue indicate that this was discarded just a few days ago. Quite the investigator. Yes, I am certain the chocolate contained in this wrapper was undoubtedly consumed on the 7th of January, the day of the murder. Mon dieu, Sparrowson, you deduce all that from smelling the wrapper? Imagine what I could work out if I tasted it. That won't be necessary. Sparrowson, if you could apply this level of critical thinking to areas outside of food, you would be the world's greatest detective. Sherlock. If only all evidence were edible. 
and with Sherlock, I mean, it reminds me of the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch edition, the modern Sherlock, the TV show. Uh, so, do you have any idea which shop ch this chocolate was purchased from? That might help us track down the person who consumed it. No, there's no possible way we could know that. I suppose we'll just have to visit every confectioner in town and sample every bit of merchandise for comparison. What a chore. Interesting, because I can see Lander Hegel's Lex Chocolate Emporium written on a wrapper. Well, you can't blame a bird for trying. Now we have a chocolate wrapper in our evidence. Chocolate wrapper that was found in Salutibre. The label reads Lander Hegel's Lex Chocolate Emporium. So we need to visit that place. Anything else? I'm not sure what this is. Some sort of stand or podium. Maybe it's just a decorative piece. It's a Roman doorstop. Roman doors were enormous marble slabs. So the doorstops had to be similar, similarly large in order to stay in place. I don't think that's right. My uncle's a Roman historian, trust me. Alright. What else? I see a cabinet full of engraved plates, mostly bronze. How much do you think they are worth? I don't know, 300 francs a piece at least. What? Are you serious? I'm in the wrong profession. I don't think archaeology works as a get-rich-quick scheme, Sparrison. Who said anything about archaeology? I'm going to become a museum robber. Oh, well, that's one way to get rich quick. He's going to become a thief. This is some sort of ceremonial container. It's beautifully crafted, crafted, but what did it contain? Maybe it's an arcane wine cabinet. Don't be so ignorant, Falcon. This is a sacred Mesopotamian artifact, grifted, gifted to Emperor Hadrian for his victory at Euphrates in 123 AD. Stop making stuff up. You and I both know nothing about Mesopotamia. Alright, alright, you got me. This could be a hippo's chamber pot for all I know. Are we done? No, those columns. These columns have been designed look Roman. I think this style is Ionic. It's not Ionic, Falcon. Ionic is when a character says something but the reader knows it means something completely different. That's not... never mind. Of course he means irony. A supporting column, it's holding the roof up. If the column were truly supportive, it wouldn't hold the roof up. It would encourage the roof to get to its location on time. Sigh. Alright. We already established that Sparrison was the funny one, especially in these uh, examination modes. I think we're done here. We're done here for now at least. We can't spend all day staring at Roman artifacts, I suppose. So where the next? To the Grande Galerie. Here we are, the Grande Galerie, the murder room. I believe the murder occurred right under the new painting. I see hundreds of paintings. Which one is a new one? I haven't the foggiest. We will have to ask someone. Eric Pork, who is a porcupine. Please don't talk to me, please don't talk to me. Excuse me, monsieur, you look like you know your Mona Lisa's from your last suppers. I don't want any attention, maybe he isn't talking to me. Nope, he's definitely talking to me. Keep it together, Eric. Oh, uh, hi. Would you happen to know which painting was unveiled on the 7th of January? The one the king came to visit? Oh yeah, I can help you with that. It's the piece right behind you. Ah, I see. It's a painting of the king himself. It's one noble-looking penguin. What do you think of it, Falcon? What do I think? Well, I'm not an art critic, but... It's subtle and nuanced. The careful brush strokes, the pre-Raphaelite soft tones and subliminal use of light. This is contrasted nuanced work. It's an evocative painting that alludes to a forgotten era. You said a lot of words, but I'm not sure if I'm any closer to knowing your opinion. I'm getting the impression 
that Yuma shows aren't regulars at art galleries. No, we're a right pair of Philistines. Speak for yourself, Falcon. I've never even been to the Middle East. <laughs> then I'm guessing you're here to investigate the King's assassination attempt. That's right, we were actually hoping we could ask you a couple of questions about what you saw. Oh, I wasn't even in Paris when the murder took place. I didn't see anything. But, uh... I have a friend who might be able to help you out. What's this? R&M Associates, the home of Renard Wolps. Private investigator? Thank you, but I don't normally deal with these grey area of the law types. No, please give the guy a chance. He helped me out of a bind before, and I'm sure he can do the same for you. He's kind of kind of talkative. Earlier he was kind of shy or didn't want to be talked to. Well, I'm not making any promises, but I'll keep hold of the card. We appreciate the help in any case. It's no trouble. And we receive a R&M business card. A business card for R&M Associates, the office of Renard Verbs, private investigator. All right. And this dude has been added to the list. An art-loving porcupine who avoids socializing. Maybe he's afraid of hurting people if he gets too close. That's deep. All right. Thank you for your time, monsieur. Is there anything else we can do here? Well, ideally, we would turn the whole Grand Galerie upside down in our hunt for evidence. But that's not possible with so many people around. We should probably just move to another room. Can we inspect the, uh, the painting again? I guess we can't. Let's go to the garden. Our feather-headed friends wandered through the immaculately maintained Tuileries gardens. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until they spot a familiar face picking up litter by a tree line. Hey Falcon, doesn't that groundskeeper over there look familiar? Yeah. Now that I'm looking at him, he does look like a, a lot like the photographer. What's his name? <laughs> How can I forget that name? Robitio Robinho. Robitio Robinho. Hmm? Did someone call me? Oh, it's you, the liars who don't appreciate a masterful photograph when they see it. It's good to see that you gave up on your artsy dreams to pursue the more grounded career of groundskeeping. Hey, I'm not doing this willingly. I was given community service for com committing perjury. Can you believe that? They gave me, an esteemed photographer, community service? Me? Yeah, I can't believe that. Perjury is somewhat serious. You should be thankful that you got off without jail time. Pfft. You sound just like that self-righteous Judge Maxime. So did you two want to ask me something? Or are you just here to gop? Personally, I'm just gopping. Actually, I do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind, Monsieur Robinho. Uh, I guess, have you met Prince a Prince Juan? I don't suppose you've bumped into a Spanish fox who goes by the name of Prince Juan, have you? A Spanish fox? No, I've never met anyone like that. If this is about the assassination attempt on the king, then you're asking the wrong person. I only started working here today. I see. Was there anything else you wanted? How's that groundskeeping going? So how's that new groundskeeping job working out? Terrible. Tourists are pigs. Sometimes literally. <laughs> look at all this rubbish I found. Beer bottles, tin cans, apple cores. And look what I picked up this by the west entrance. A book page. A whole book I could understand, but a single page? What kind of blithering moron loses just one page? Wait a moment. May I take a closer look at that, monsieur? Don Quixote. That's a page from Don Quixote. May I take it off your hands, monsieur? Sure. What's it worth to you? What's it worth? It's trash. It's literally worthless. Then I suppose I'll be destroying it. As per my duties. Alright, alright. I suppose you deserve a little compensation for your trouble. How about you give me the page and... Hmm, interesting. Give him money. Reduce his sentence, I guess. This is quite excessive. I guess I'll speak with the Judge Maxime. 
Yeah. I'll speak with Judge Maxime. I'll put in a good word and might be able to get your sentence reduced. Really? You'll do that for me? Thank you, monsieur. I would really appreciate that. Here, take the page. And there's a page 44 of El Ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha added to my folder. Page 44, it was found in Tulis Garden by the Louvre's west entrance. Alright, so how does this fit all together? Hmm.